The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Since the Equitable Life Assurance Society was founded 90 years ago, this country has changed in many ways. But in one respect, it is still the same. In those early days, people always spoke of America as the land of opportunity. Well, it still is the land of opportunity just as much as ever. In just a few minutes, in tonight's middle commercial, the Equitable Society will have a special message for listeners who agree with this philosophy. We will describe a special life insurance plan for men and women on the way up, offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight's FBI file, The Comeback Kid. It is part of the American heritage that a young boy in this country learns that it is 90 feet between home plate and first base before he learns that there are two United States senators elected from each state. Americans love sports. Nowhere else in the world have people ever paid more than a million dollars as they have six times in this country to see two men fight for the privilege of being heavyweight champion of the world. Each year, football fans spend millions to watch their favorite teams in action, and basketball fans still more millions. People pay that money because sports is an important thing in our lives, and for that reason, it is too bad that a criminal element has infiltrated around the edges of certain sports. The reasons for that infiltration are varied. There's a certain amount of easy money that attracts these petty larceny hoodlums, But the greatest attraction is that it gives them a chance to mix socially with decent human beings. A chance they would otherwise never get. Tonight's file is a graphic illustration of this. Tonight's file opens at a price-fighting camp located on the outskirts of a large eastern city. It is mid-afternoon, and as a slow, awkward heavyweight beats the big bag... A man with an unlighted cigar in his mouth watches and comments. Up with the left, Charlie. Up, up. Hey, you're wasting your time, Leo. Oh, he never looks good in camp, George. He looks worse when he fights. Hook! Don't swing! Hook! Now get that shoulder into it. Twelve inches. That's all the punch has got to travel. Now come on, Charlie. Get with it. Leo, why don't you send him to the glue factory? Ah. Uh, Mr. Troy? Yeah. I'm Red Daniels. Uh, Artie Belmont called you about me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep working, Charlie. You a friend of Artie Belmont? Uh, he used to write about my fights a lot. He liked me. Yeah? How long you been around? Since a little before the war. It's a lot of mileage. Well, I was in the Army for five years. How come you need a manager? The guy that used to handle me died. Oh. What do you weigh in at? 160. How'd you do before the Army? Win 18, lose two. Three limbs? Oh, sir, I fought on top of the card at the arena. And I wasn't in the fight racket then. All right, Charlie, rest a minute. Leo, this guy is giving you a routine. No, no, I'm not. Look, if you fought in a man at the arena, why do you need someone to do you the favor to handle you? When I got out of the Army, a lot of guys wanted to handle me. Well, why don't you go with them? Well, this leg was shot up while I was overseas. Uh. It's only just now getting better. Is it all better? Almost. When I get real tired, it drags just a little. Maybe you can work it out. And you give me a chance? You got any dough? No. You know what that means, Leo. You go for his room and scoff. I'll pay for myself with the first fight. Look, Mr. Troy, this means a lot to me. Well, go up to the main house, get a locker, and put some trunks on. I want to take a look at you before I say okay. 
Thanks, Mr. Troy. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, here we go again. You know, this guy may have something. Oh, sure, sure. That's what you always say. Look, Leo, our touch is larceny. That's a business we know something about. But fighters, Quit we don't... Quit beefing. Know... I got a right to beef when I have to feed bums like that. George, this joint is on my tab. So are the fighters. Now, I don't want to hear any more about it. But you can't... Come you on, gotta... Charlie, get back to that bag. The next day, at the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is standing in front of a huge map when Agent Stanley Webster approaches. Oh, Jim. Oh, morning, Stan. Oh, you uh, trying to find a shortcut home? <laughs> no, no, not exactly. What are the pins for? Well, each one represents a different hijacking. That we've worked on? No. I didn't think so. This yellow pin up here, that, that's the one we're on now. What are the others? Well, they're all recent, but they're under local jurisdiction. Oh, that one happened last night. However, they're all the work of one man. One man? Mm hmm. Wouldn't it be pretty tough for him to hijack a truck alone? Not the way he does it. He uses a state trooper's uniform. He flags down the truck, pulls out a gun, and makes the driver get out of the cab. And he ties him up, and off he goes. Mm, great. Any idea where? No, none so far. That's why I'm studying the map. How much of a description have we got? So little that it's almost negligible. Well, that's a nice way to start on a case. Well, there have been some leads, but they've all turned out to be false. Has the last truck turned up yet? No. No, not yet. Well, Stan, I'm going down to the garage and get a car. Yeah, what for? I think I'll drive out and study the roads where these hijackings have been taking place and see if I can find a lead. That you, George? Yeah, Leo. Where you been? Uh, getting rid of the truck. No. Uh, where's the whiskey? Over there. Hmm. Did you go into town? Uh-huh. How did you make out? Well, I got Red Daniels on Monday's card at the Grove. Of course, it's only a prelim. Leo, but... wait a minute. You were going in to get rid of that last load we lifted. Instead, you put this kid here. Who is it? That's me, Red Daniels. Oh, come in, Red. How's the leg? It's coming pretty good. Well, I'm glad to hear it. We fight Monday night. This Monday? Yep. Oh, Mr. Troy, the leg ain't that good yet. Been doing road work, ain't you? Yeah. Had massages, stuff like that? Sure, but... We fight Monday. Can't I have another week? No. But, Mr. Troy... Look, how long do you think I'm going to go for feeding and sleeping you here? What am I, a charity? Look, I'm not asking for Red. charity. We fight Monday night. <sighs> okay. There, you see? You waste your time getting matches for bums like that, and you forget all about contacting the boys and getting rid of the stuff. I got rid of the stuff. Huh? Got top dough for it, too. Oh. I got another truck all spotted for you. You take it tonight. Hi, Jim. I thought you were out inspecting that truck the police found. Oh, I was. Did you get anything? I not only didn't get anything, but there was another hijacking last night. No, by the same man? That's right. Has an alarm gone out? Yeah. I think we might get a little quicker action this time. Why? This was a refrigerated truck. What did you get this time, meat? No, butter. Well, that's just as easy to get rid of. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've been on this case five days now, and we're still no further than we were when we started. Except for another pin there on the map. Yeah. I guess those truck drivers don't read the papers. Well, even if they did read about it, Stan, they'd still have to stop when a state trooper flags them down. I suppose so. Oh, I added these blue pins here this morning. They each represent the place where the truck was recovered. Uh-huh. They're pretty well, pretty well spread out. Yeah. Well, you can't keep a surveillance on every one of those roads. It'd take more men than... Oh, pardon me, Stan. Yeah, sure. Special Agent Taylor speaking. And this is Sergeant Caldwell at the Heights Precinct, Mr. Taylor. Yes, Sergeant. We just got a phone call from a man named Jenkins. Yeah? He's a printer who lives up in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Well, he read a story in the paper about last night's hijacking. He says when he came home this morning, about 4 o'clock, he saw the missing truck. Oh? How did he know it was the one that was stolen? Well, he read the description in this morning's paper. Oh. Where was it? Heading into the Green Anchors Flight Camp. Well, isn't that a reputable training camp, Sergeant? Uh, it used to be. It's pretty run down now. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, can you go over there and check around the place? One of our men is on his way out there now. Good. As soon as we hear anything, I'll call you. 
the arena for you. Uh, this red's a dog, a real dog. Lost every round. Listen to that, will you? Leo, I just spoke to Charlie at the camp. He called me. A cop came around. On business? Yeah. He was looking for the truck I grabbed last night. Well, what brought him to our joint? Ah, uh, somebody saw me driving it in. It ain't there now, is it? Ah, uh, I dished it right after you came into town. Oh, good. Well, the fight's over. Charlie stalled the cop, told him he didn't know nothing about it. But the guy's coming back to see you. How do we handle it? Yeah, wait a minute. There comes the decision. Ah, yeah, that bum. Look, Leo, forget about Daniels and think about how we'll square this beef. What can we do? Well, I think I got that figured. Huh? We need a car, George. The hotter, the better. What for? To drive Daniels back to camp. To drive to... I don't get it. I got dough invested in that guy, and I'm getting it back. Leo, I'm sorry about tonight. Uh Uh-huh. I tried... The leg went bad in the fourth. That's why I couldn't go to his left. Uh Uh-huh. When I went down, that's when I hurt the leg. He didn't hit me. I fell. Didn't it look like I fell, George? I didn't get there till the last heat. Well, I did. Hey, you don't think that guy could hit hard enough to knock me down. Red, you know what I think? I think you're the worst stiff I ever handled. Oh, wait a minute, Leo. You knew about my leg. Sure, sure. You knew I wasn't ready. You won't be ready, ever. And I'm the guy that's stuck for it. Money stuck? That's right. What about the purse tonight? Your end wouldn't pay for two days' board. And suppose you let me know just how much more you got coming. You won't get stuck for it. I'll get a job and pay you back every time of it. I can't wait, Red. I'm collecting right now. Pull off the road, George. We got some work to do. We will reopen tonight's FBI file in just a moment. Now, a special message to a very special kind of person. To the man or woman who can truthfully say to himself, I'm on the way up. Is that how you feel about yourself? Are you determined that someday your boss will say to you, This is your new office, Tom. Keep on the way you're going. We'll make you a partner in a year or two. Be frank with yourself. Do those words, on the way up, describe you? Are you confidently looking forward to greater responsibilities and salary increases in the next few years? If so you will be particularly interested in a special life insurance plan for men of your type. It's known as the Equitable Society's Plan for Men and Women on the Way Up. It offers you these three important advantages. First, immediate protection. The moment you sign the contract, you enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing that your wife and children have the protection they need. Second, the Equitable Plan provides for readjustments in the future. Five years from now, when you're making more money, you can make up your mind whether you want more protection or bigger cash values. Or you may decide to work out a retirement program. In other words, your life insurance keeps in step with your income. Third advantage, the equitable plan is flexible at all times. It can expand or contract as you see fit and offers you many desirable options, which your equitable society representative will be glad to explain to you. So... Why not get in touch with him, phone him, and ask for full details on the equitable plan for people on the way up, or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. 
That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Comeback Kid. The Federal Bureau of Investigation cooperates in bringing this series of official programs because it believes that it is to your best interest and to theirs to acquaint you with a criminal in our midst. With your greater knowledge of his habits, his mental processes, and his character, you are better able to help fight the crime wave. And through your enhanced ability, your FBI is also better able to do its job. Tonight's file was chosen because it is an example of how criminals will attempt to frame a decent, innocent person, forgetting what the possible consequences might be. That willingness to frame an innocent citizen sometimes comes as a shock to people. Why it does is something of a mystery, since by now it should have been accepted in every quarter that there is no shred of decency in any one of the many different species of lawbreakers. There are differences in criminals... Differences so great that no single yardstick can be found against which to measure a stranger and pronounce him a criminal or a respectable citizen. They are different in appearance, in demeanor, in dress, and in almost everything else. However, they do manage to band together under one single banner, a banner which contains the unspoken motto of virtually every criminal, whether he be guilty of arson, theft, or murder. That motto which determines their every act is... What's in it for me? Tonight's file continues in a corridor at a local hospital. Dr. Chanchamino. Dr. Chanchamino. Call the office, please. Got here as soon as I could, Stan. Well, there wasn't any need to hurry, Jim. What brought you here? I think the hijackings may be cleaned up. Oh, how? There was a stolen car found wrecked on Route 17. Uh-huh. Police found a fighter named Billy Daniels behind the wheel. Daniels. His nickname Red? Yeah. Oh, I remember him. The car was found near the Green Acres flight camp, and in the back seat, police found a state trooper's uniform. Oh, how long ago was all this? Why, apparently the car was wrecked last night, but it wasn't found until early this morning. Hmm. How badly was Daniels, sir? Well, his head was pretty badly bruised. He's still in a coma. No idea when the doctor will let anybody talk to him? No, not yet. Well, I... Guess I did my road work for nothing. What's that, Jim? Well, I went up to where the police found that refrigerated truck. Oh. I got some prints off the rearview mirror and also off the wheel. Good, off the wheel. Yeah. Truck driver was wearing gloves, so these prints must belong to Daniels. Did you drop them at the office? Mm-hmm. I dentist checking on them now. Well, looks like all we have to do is wait for Daniels to come to and arrest him. We've also got to find out where that loot was kept. Sounds to me like it was probably the fight camp. You know, that's what I think, too, Stan. I'm going up there and take a look around. No, 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 no. Stay up on your toes, Freddy. Punch some air. Yeah, now that's better. Now shorten the punch. About 12 inches. Pardon me. Huh? Mr. Troy? Uh Uh-huh. I'm a special agent of the FBI. You're my credentials. Uh Huh? Well, I guess they're legit. I wonder if I can ask you a few questions, Mr. Troy. About what? Red Daniels. Sure. You're Daniels' manager, aren't you? Uh Uh-huh. Is he in trouble? Yeah. What's the rap? Well, we think he may have been involved in some hijackings. No kidding. A number of trucks have been held up lately. The thief impersonated a state trooper. Yeah? A wrecked car was found last night. Daniels was at the wheel. In the back of the car, we found a bogus state trooper's uniform. Well, how do you like that? Do you know anything about this? No, no. Well, Daniels is in the hospital now. We haven't been able to question him yet. He's still alive? Yes, but he's in a coma. Well, what hospital? Memorial. <laughs> I never figured red for anything like that. Although he did flash a lot of dough lately. Uh-huh. A large amount? Yeah, a couple of grand anyway. Told me he scored it in a crap game. Well, Mr. Troy, one of the stolen trucks was seen coming up here to your camp. Here? Mm-hmm. You suppose Daniels kept the loot up here? Well, of course not. How could he without my knowing about it? I have. 
Would you mind taking a look at this list for me? Huh? What is it? Oh, it's a list of the dates the hijackings were committed on. Oh. Well, what do you want me to do? See if you can remember any of those dates and tell me where the Daniels was absent from camp. Uh-huh. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, here's one I'm sure about. Oh, which one is that? March the 19th. Mm-hmm. May I ask you uh, how you know? Well, it's my brother Harry's birthday. Oh, I see. Had a big party up here for him that night, and Daniels wasn't here. Said he had a big date. From what you say, I guess he did. Oh, thanks. Oh, uh, could I have the list back, please? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, looks like the best thing I can do is get back to the office and swear out a warrant for Daniel's arrest. Hello. Leo? Yeah. George. Where you been? Out. I've been trying to get you. Why? We got trouble. What kind? Red didn't die. How do you know? There was an FBI guy here. For what? To see me. Did Red talk? Not yet. He's in a coma. Oh. I put the finger on him now. They think he did the jobs? Yeah, they do now. But if he comes out of it, he'll blow the whole thing. Now, get over here as soon as you can. Doctor yet, Stan? Yeah. Daniels came to for about ten minutes, but he passed out again. Get a chance to talk to him? No, but he made a statement to the doctor. Oh. He said he was hit on the head while he was riding back to the training camp. By whom? Leo Troy. Well, that's going to be a little hard to prove. Daniels says there was another man in the car at the time. Oh, who? Someone named George. He doesn't know his second name. Any description on him? Yeah. Black hair, dark skin, and about the same size as Daniels. Well, we'll be able to tell later on if Daniels is telling us the truth. Yeah, how? Well, I've covered quite a bit of ground since I left here. The first thing I did was examine the car that Daniels was found in. Mm-hmm. Did you get anything? Some prints off the steering wheel, some others off the right rear door handle. Good, then what? Then I went to see Leo Troy. Oh, I got his fingerprints. How? Handed him a sheet of paper with the dates of the hijackings on it. You know, Stan, I think Troy's mixed up in this, too. Have you brought any of the prints to the office? No, I came by here to pick you up first. Come on, let's get over there. Okay. Oh, there's one other thing to check. What's that? That uh, state trooper's uniform? While I'm working with Ident or the Prince, will you see if you can find out where it comes from? Well, Stan, it looks as if Daniels was telling us the truth. Really? Yes, the prints I found on the steering wheel of the sedan matched the prints I got off the stolen truck. Are they Leo Troy's? No, we don't know whose they are. Not on file. Well, we haven't got enough prints here to find out. Whoever this is hasn't got a listing in the single fingerprint file. That's too bad. Oh, the prints I got off the right rear door handle were identified, though. Who belongs to them? Leo Troy. Well, that should be enough for us to pick him up. Well, let's wait until we can find out who that other man is. The one Daniel said was in the car. The one called George? Yeah. You know, I thought for a while I'd be able to get a definite lead on him. Uh Uh-huh. From the trooper's uniform. Oh, what did you get? Well, there were some hairs in the gap. They were jet black. Now, Daniel's has red hair and Troy's gray. Daniel said this George had black hair. Yeah, I also found out that the uniform was rented. Uh Uh-huh. The costume company said it was taken by a man named Peter Thompson, who gave his address as 618 West Oak Street. Oak? Yeah, I think Thompson is this man, George. Hey, there's uh, no 600 block on West Oak? Yeah, they found that out when the uniform wasn't returned in time. How long ago was it rented? Uh, a couple of months ago. Why? As I remember it, it was spotless. Yeah, it was. Where's that trooper's uniform now? Back at my desk. Come on, I want to see something. <laughs> Oh, hi, George. Got a load of that kid in there. Pretty classy, huh? Bert Turner sent him to me. Oh, the only fighter I'm interested in is Red Daniels. Hey, you don't have to be anymore. What do you mean? Poor Red died. Hey. Jab with the left, kid. Leo. Jab, jab. That's Leo, it. how do you know? What? How do you know Red died? I called the hospital. Told him I was his manager. Got it right from his doc. Oh. <laughs> well... That saves us lots of trouble, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> I had us all booked on a plane. <laughs> well, you can forget that now. That's it, kid. You're looking good. New fighter, Mr. Troy? Huh? Remember me? Uh, yeah, yeah. You're from the FBI. That's right. I just heard about Red Daniels kicking over. It's too bad. Well, I'm afraid that isn't exactly true. 
Well, what do you mean? Well, I asked the hospital to give that information to anyone other than his family who called. No, Red Daniels is still alive. What? Hey, what is this? A way of ensuring that you wouldn't leave town, Phillips. How do you know my name? It's on one of these warrants. Warrants? I'm here to arrest you both for the thefts you tried to hang on, Red Daniels. <laughs> Leo Troy and George Phillips were tried and convicted in the federal court and sentenced to 25 years in prison for theft from interstate shipment. The reasoning which Special Agent Taylor used to arrive at the clue which led to the identification of George Phillips was that in order to be spotless, the state trooper's uniform had to have been cleaned very recently. There was a cleaning mark on the inside of the jacket, a cleaning mark which led to the correct tailor and from him to George Phillips. Phillips was then followed to Troy's fight camp. There was infinite skill required in the investigation of tonight's case, infinite skill by the two special agents, the local police department, and the identification section and crime laboratory of your FBI. All their skills were blended together to produce the two arrests and subsequent convictions. However, even more satisfying was the fact that your FBI established the innocence of a man who was being framed. The files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation are replete with cases of similarly innocent men being cleared, and your FBI points with pride to those cases, for they are constant living proof of the lengths to which every special agent is trained to go to protect not only your life and your property, but also your personal liberty. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Not long ago, a famous American industrialist gave some very inspiring advice to young men. He said, Think in terms of a big future for yourself, and the chances are you'll have one. Yes, and one good way to think in terms of a big future for yourself is to look into the kind of life insurance which was designed for people who expect to get ahead. That's the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Merely by investigating this interesting equitable plan, you give convincing proof of your faith in your future success. So why not build up your morale by getting in touch with your equitable representative? Ask him for facts and figures on the Equitable Society's plan for men and women on the way up. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A graphic story of crime in a mountain wilderness. Its subject, robbery. Its title, The Highland Holdup. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Bill Conrad, Tom Holland, Peter Leeds, John Stevenson, and Roland Winters. This Is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Highland Holdup on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.